If you have old family photos that you've digitized and now you'd like to add them to your online family tree, I'm going to show you how to resize, change the file format, and upload or download images for the big three genealogy sites, Ancestry, Family Search, and MyHeritage. The first thing we need to do is make a copy of the digital master because I never want to alter my digital master and the file size is going to be too large to upload as it is. So each of these sites allow files up to 15 megabytes and as you can see, these photos are well over that limit. So we're going to find the photo that I want to upload today. It's here in my ready to store file. I've already gone through the steps of scanning these photos, adding the metadata and changing the file name, which is why they're in this folder because they're ready to be stored away in their proper place. But first I want to add these newly scanned photos to my online family trees. So I'm going to take this and make a copy of this file by clicking on copy to and selecting the file that I want to copy it to, which is uploads. Now you can see that the copy is populated in my uploads folder. So let's go ahead and open that up. Here's the copy I just made and I wanna be sure that I can easily differentiate between the two just by a quick glance. So I'm going to add copy in big letters to this file name. Next, I'm going to take this copy and change the file format from TIFF to JPEG. So I'm going to right click the image and click edit with paint 3D. This will also work in the regular paint program as well, just so you know. So you'll click on menu, click save as, select image, and now you'll see here the option to change the file type. So click here under save as type and select JPEG then click save and that image is now saved here in my uploads folder as well. You can see that the size of the TIFF file is 213 megabytes while the size of the JPEG is significantly smaller at 5.55 megabytes. Before I get rid of the TIFF copy, I want to add the metadata from the original file. So the metadata stayed with the copy of the digital master that I made, but once I converted that copy from a TIFF to a JPEG, the metadata did not transfer to this new file. Adding metadata to your uploads is a good idea because then whenever that image is downloaded, all of the data that you entered originally will still be attached to the photo. Any information that you add to the photo once it's on the website, like Ancestry, that information won't stay with the photo if it's downloaded back from the website. It's only visible when you're viewing the photo on their site. Adding metadata to the photo is also a great way to add your contact information if someone would like to reach out to you about it. You might be surprised how far and wide your photo might travel if you upload it publicly. And that metadata could really come in handy, not just for you, but for whoever does download it. If you don't care about any of this, then you can skip that part. <laughs> You'll see our new JPEG here has 96 DPI compared to the original 600 DPI, which is suitable for screens and web. Since this is going to be the copy that I use to upload to all of my family trees online, I'm using the file format JPEG because it can be used across the board for all of the genealogy sites. MyHeritage, for example, won't allow you to animate a TIFF, so I find that I can get the most mileage out of a JPEG for this purpose. And now that I'm done with this TIFF copy, I'll go ahead and delete it. Now we're left with this smaller size JPEG and we'll start by uploading it to Ancestry. So here we are, we have the profile for my third great grandfather, George Morrill. When I click on gallery, it'll bring this page up where I can add any media. So photos, stories, or audio. There are also some options here to filter and sort the media once I have some uploaded. Then over here, we have images of some of the sources that I've attached to his profile already. So if I wanna add a photo for George, I go back to content and I click on add media. Then I select upload photo and it will let you know the file type and size that they accept here on their site. You can drag and drop your photo in this box on the web page, or you can click upload photo and select the photo from your files. So we'll go into the uploads folder and select the file we just created for this. 
from here, we can edit the title, add what type of media it is, along with the date and location of the photo and a description. You can link the photo to any other family members here. And once you've finished, you click done. Now the photo's here in his gallery, and if we click on the image, we'll see this is where we can print, save, share, edit, or tag the photo that we just uploaded. So if I click view tags, I can start tagging the photo like this by clicking on the faces in the photo and typing the name of my ancestor. We can also edit the photo by clicking here, where we have the option to colorize the photo like this, or we can sharpen the image, we can also add a filter or we can crop and adjust the orientation of the photo, which we don't need to do here. I can save a copy of this colorized version to his gallery as well if I like it. Here we see that this photo has been added as George's profile photo now, so I'll make a quick adjustment and click resize profile image. From here I'll go ahead and crop his head for his profile photo and click save, and now that looks much better. <laughs> One of the differences with Ancestry from the other sites is that you can add a photo to an event for your ancestor. So, just as an example, let's say that this photo we just added happened to be for George's baptism. We'll scroll down here on his timeline and find the event that we want to attach the photo to. Here's his baptism in 1860, so we're going to click edit. And from here, we'll click attach media. We can either upload it right here or we can choose a photo down here that we've already added to his profile. You can add the photo to the event by clicking this blue button plus sign and there it goes. Now it's attached to the event and you can see it right there on his timeline. If you make a mistake and you want to undo that, you simply pull it back up and click this little X right here and the photo is no longer attached to the event. Lastly, if you find an image for your ancestor that you'd like to add to your collection, downloading the photo is easy. I've pulled this photo up that was added by a cousin of mine for my great grand uncle. Over here you can see her name, when I saved it, and who else has saved this photo on Ancestry. Now to download the photo, we go over here and click on this symbol to save it to our computer. Once that downloads, I'll open my downloads folder and transfer the photo over to my uploads file while I work on some of the metadata. So you'll see here that the resolution is 96 dpi, meaning it's going to look good on my screen, but if I try to print this, that's a different story. The minimum dpi you want for a printed image is 300 dots per inch. I would suggest including somewhere that you got this image from Ancestry, so you could put that in the file name if you want, like this. You can also add that information to the metadata over here, and maybe even include the name of the person who uploaded the image. Next, we have Family Search. From George's profile, I'll click on Memories right here. You'll see some photos have already been added by other members, including a version of the photo that I have here. One of the advantages to having a global family tree like Family Search is that you can collaborate on photos like this. So you'll see that some people have already been tagged and it tells you down here that this photo has been viewed 30 times so far. I know from my Graham's notes that this gentleman here is Herbert Morrill, so I could tag his name here and contribute that. Just for the sake of an example, I'm going to upload this photo of mine to show you what that process looks like on Family Search. So we'll click on Add Memories. There are three options for audio, story, and file. We'll click File to upload this photo and we'll upload from my device. Here's my copy that I want to upload, so I'll select it and then click open. And now that photo is here processing in his memories. All right, while that's processing, we'll check out some of the features on here. There's the option to tag your ancestors, so I can click on their faces and type their names here to attach them. There's an area over here to the right to add topics tags the date and location, a description, I can add the photo to an album, or I can add a story to the photo. I can make the story private or public as well, which is the same case for the photo itself. You'll see right here, you can set the photo to public or private. 
Then up here we can edit the title. These are some of the options to adjust the orientation, bookmark the photo or share it. And down here you can record a memory about the photo or add a comment. Now if we wanted to download the image like this one right here, we go up to actions, we click on download, and then once again, go find the image in the download folder where I then transfer it to my uploads folder. Okay, here it is. You can see this image is a TIFF file. I'm going to add family search to the file name again so I know where I got this. I'm also going to go back over here and check to see who uploaded this photo. So Trevor Hall, I'm going to open the properties of this photo I downloaded and I'm going to add some metadata here now. I'm going to include where I got this image and who uploaded it. Then I'll add the usual suspects like the subject, tags. I'll add Trevor as the author too, why not? Add a title. If Trevor had included any metadata with his photo that he had uploaded to Family Search, that would all show up right here for me now. Now, if we come down here, we'll see that this particular image is 200 DPI, so still not quite the 300 DPI minimum that we want uh, to be able to print this image, but it's still great for the screen. Finally, let's take a look at my heritage. So here's the profile for George Morrill. You'll see right down here is where we can add photos for him. So we'll click add photos of George and select our file. Now here you'll see even though our image we want to upload is less than 15 megabytes, the file is too large because it's over 5,000 pixels wide and 4,000 pixels tall. So now we're going to resize this image so it will meet the requirements to upload. You can resize the image by locating the file and opening it up like this. We click these three dots here and the drop down will show an option to resize image. Select that and you'll see these options. You can see right here the current size of the image and then down here it will tell you what each of these options will produce. I'm going to go with best for viewing because I feel like that meets the my heritage requirements while still having better image quality. So I click best for viewing and I'm going to save that in my uploads file. I'm going to have this image replace the one that I've been working with so far so I don't have a bunch of duplicates floating around. Okay, now we'll go back with our resized image and upload that to my heritage. So now that image is uploaded to his profile successfully and we can go open it up. From here we can add the date and place. We can tag our ancestors that are in the photo. There's a place here we can add keywords or notes. We could add it to an album or we could add a comment to the photo. There's some information about the image right here as well as a link that you can share to access the photo. You see the options to enhance, colorize, and animate as well all up here. And it shows the before and after nicely. Down here they've organized the different faces. You can add names for those faces. This is what the colorization looks like. So similar to what we saw in Ancestry. Then there's the animation feature, which I think is fun. So if we click on that, it'll bring up the list of faces that you can choose to animate. A few more things that we can look at here. So up here we have the option to download, the photo settings, and more. If you click on more, you'll see the option to delete the photo, or you can click repair. So you'll see here there's this crease that goes down along the photograph, and the repair feature does its best to take that crease out. Unfortunately, the crease went right through this poor woman's face, so as you can see when we zoom in, her face is a little distorted from the repair. Now we can go to photo settings and take that a little further and do an extensive repair if we wanted to. We won't do that today though. The last thing that we'll do is download an image from MyHeritage. Let's say we want to save this enhanced colorized photo. We'll go over here and click download and select improved photo. 
You could also download the comparison if you wanted to. So we've selected the improved photo and we'll move it from my downloads file over to the uploads. Now we've got these two images side by side. So here's the image from before the My Heritage edits, and then here it is with the edits that we did there. This is why it's fun to play around with the settings on your images, but you also want to remember to only do this with copies of your digital master. That way you'll always have that high quality image for backup always there. As you can see, each site has different options of what you can do with the photos once you've uploaded them. There are of course similarities with the options such as the titles, the date, the location, comments, ancestor tags. Um, those are pretty common across the board. Each offers the ability to share your photos on social media or by email. One option that Ancestry offers that the others do not is the option to add the photo to an event like I showed you. Family Search doesn't offer any photo editing or restoration options, but unlike Ancestry or MyHeritage, you can record a memory about the photo, you can attach a story to it, choose whether you want it to be public or private, and you can also add topic tags. MyHeritage has the most options when it comes to editing and enhancing your photos. As you saw, you can enhance, repair, colorize, and animate them. MyHeritage will also share a little information about the photo as opposed to Ancestry and Family Search. So you'll see the type, the width, height, and size of the file. You can add keywords to your photos on MyHeritage, which is similar to the topics tag concept on Family Search, but hopefully you have a better idea of how you can use your photos on these sites, how to resize and change the format of your images so that you can upload them, as well as how you can download any images that you might want to add to your collection. Let me know in the comments if you have any questions or if you'd like to share what photo features that you like to use on these sites. As always, thanks for watching and I'll be back with more on Friday.